framework via Ionic across OpenStack and Kubernetes. Uh, about us, uh, I'm Yudi, a senior software engineer at Red Hat, former Iron PTL during yoga and Z cycles, and also a Metal Cube and Iron contributor. Jacob, it would be presenting with me, but he wasn't able to come. What we will discuss today, uh, I'll give you just an initial overview about Ironic and MetalCube. Uh, talk about the use cases for that, uh, the old way for firmware update in Ironic, and the new way we have introduced it there. And I will do two demos, three to be precise, and then I will open to some questions. Overview, so <coughs> in general you probably know what Iron is, the project to manage bare metal in OpenStack. Uh, Kubernetes, the system for automating deployment and scaling and management of containerized applications. And MetalCube, it would be the bare metal host provision for Kubernetes uh, CNCF project. And how do they work together? You would be thinking. Well, uh, Iron can integrate with MetalCube. You would have it running in a pod with Iron KPI there. And in Kubernetes, you would have a bare metal host uh, CR definition. And with the bare metal operator provided, you can talk to Ironic and then do the provision of a bare metal machine via Kubernetes. So, our use cases. Uh, we would like to enable an easy and streamlined mechanism to keep the firmware up to date. This would help us to ensure reliability. Uh, normally, it's recommended that you should keep your firmware up to date. It may prevent some issues or fix some that you are facing. Uh, serviceability. Some vendors, uh, they require that your firmware is up to date to provide support for, for you and also access to new features that they have provided and released in newer versions that you would be interested in. Uh, we also want to enable a mechanism that would consistent the baseline of firmware versions across the environment and that should also support upgrades and downgrades for the use case. This helps, for example, you need a machine that needs to be replaced in your infrastructure and this is a new machine that you got you just bought and it is running with a newer firmware and you need to downgrade to have the same uh, firmware version as the whole closet for example and it also we want to be able to identify if some issues that we are facing in the machine that we did the update, for example, if it's related to the firmware so we can correlate with the timeline for that. And also ensure the traceability by keeping track of the initial version that you have that machine running and the newer version that you have installed or even an older version. So the old way how I did things. Uh, back in Itaca, uh, the ILO hardware type in Ironic decided to support firmware updates. This was in 2016. In 2018, ILO, the ILO driver also had support for a new feature, uh, update firmware sum. And in 2020, during the Victoria cycle, uh, Redfish driver at the support for updating firmware. So okay, Iron already provides update for firmware, so what is new on, on that? Uh, before, we used to do just clean steps, and as you can see, it was driving by a specific driver and also a specific interface and also I'm describing the type of arguments that you would need to pass to each one of them. So as you can see, uh, for example, the update firmware in Idle, you would need to pass a list of JSON dictionaries of firmware images containing the URL checksum and the component that should be updated there. While in the 
up the firmware sum for IO. It only requires a URL and checksum. The components would be optional, but I decided to just create a new clean step that would allow updating the firmware. For Redfish, this would work for any driver that enables Redfish, basically. Uh, you would pass a list of JSON dictionary for firmware images, and URL and checksum are mandatory fields. An optional field, it, it would be weight. In Iron, you have the concept of clean steps. Uh, and basically, this is executed when you are provisioning the machine or when you are doing the deprovisioning of it. This is how it would look like, the specification that the user would need to pass to update the firmware for an idle machine. This would be Mitaka, but is it still the same nowadays if you are using ILO specifically? Uh, the update firmware shown, more simple, at least for the point of view for the user. And in Redfish, this is how it would look like. So the management interface in general is something that you can set for your bare metal host. And basically there are many different interfaces that you need to choose and it will be based on the hardware that you are using in your environment. Uh, here I have the examples of all the interfaces uh, related to also Redfish. Uh, for example, iDrop Redfish and RMC, they are Redfish based interface. So they can also use the update firmware feature in the same way as we implemented for Redfish. So a few things that you need to keep in mind when you want to do the firmware update in Ironic using the clean step. The node must be in the manageable state. So it's before you are going to provision the node that this will be executed. And also, there was like the whole different syntax depending on the hardware type that you are using. So, after many discussions with the community and so on, uh, we are trying to find a new way that would probably be simpler for the end user. And we had some different use case for that. Uh, we want to know what is the current firmware for the BMC on this node. What is the BIOS that is installed on this node? When did I install the new BMC and BIOS firmware for this node? So, we came up again with Redfish, because for those who doesn't know, it's a new hardware management mechanism. Uh, I standard designed to deliver simple and secure management for converged hybrid, hybrid IT and software defined data center. This is from the Redfish page. And works across different hardware vendors, that's the good thing, basically. And we don't want to talk about IBM right here. And the comic, it's basically, okay, yeah, we are trying to create a new standard, but then we have many different ones competing and trying to do the same. Because you have the specification, but each hardware vendor, they can read the specification, and they will probably think, oh, this is how I'm going to implement and they were implementing different ways the same thing. This will happen for sure. So we came up with a new interface for Ironic that we would need to set for your node. And it's the firmware interface. The only implementation currently is the Redfish one, but there are plans for a new one in the next cycle. There are some discussions ongoing about this. Uh, it had the capability to have an API that will provide the information about the firmware that you have in your machine. And a new clean step specifically for this interface that would allow supporting the update firmware for only BIOS and BMC at the moment. So the advantages for that, it will work across multiple hardware if they are following the Redfish standard without any problems. Uh, there is a CLI for the end user to retrieve the information about the firmware version and they can also use the API di directly for that. These adventures, currently we are only supporting BIOS and BMC, but there are plans for the future to, for example, support 
uh, firmware updates for the leak in the machine. And it's available since the Bobcat release, so almost one year ago. So, demo time. Let me first explain the scenarios that I will be doing. Uh, the first one will be a Kubernetes demo with OpenShift, uh, MetalCube, and Ironic using a real hardware. Uh, the R640. Uh, in the first one, we will upgrade the DMC firmware for the bare metal host that would be already provisioned. And the second part of it, we are going to add a new bare metal host and execute a firmware downgrade for BMC and, and BIOS before provisioning that, that host. And the second demo, it's an OpenStack demo with Ironic running on Bifrost standalone. And this is in a virtual environment, so we can also test updates in the virtual environment. We will retrieving, show how to retrieve the information via CLI and how to update the environmental node using the command line. secret for that bare metal host and then you need to have the information for the bare metal host CR in the, and we will use the same credential as before and you need to pass the address and disable certification and boot MAC address is required for to deploy. Then we apply that for the cluster. As you can see, it shows secret and bare metal was created, so we create the resource related to that. And when listing the host primary components now, it's already creating uh, host primary components for the new host that we just we are adding to the cluster. Now I'm going to show how it looks like. This is the output that you would get when it's automatically generated. The specs will be empty. In status, you have the information about each component and the versions. Now the host is going through inspecting. Uh, in a few, it will be available, and then we are going to have the, this bare metal host provision in the cluster. When it's available, you need to scale up to get the bare metal host to go to provisioning. So we just try to scale the machine set that we have for workers and we increase that. And now I will show that instead of available, it's going to provisioning. No, we have three. We want three, two is available, and then listen to the bare metal host. As you can see, it's provisioning. So in a few, it's a fast forward demo for, for sure, if you pay attention to the time for the bare metal host. And now it's already provisioned, like magic. But it took like 22 minutes. And if you, now I'm going to check the host primary components for it again. This is the, all the information that we retrieve via Ironic for this machine. And now I'm planning on doing an update for the, this host and I will update the BMC for it. 
So we just edit the host firmware components resource for it. We go to the update section, and we add the information about the component that we would like to have an update for the bare metal host. And we pass the URL that should provide the new image that will be used. After doing this, since the node it was already provisioned, we would need to make it go through deprovisioning. It would be required. So now I'm going to annotate the machine created for, for it to be able to scale down the cluster in a few. So we got the machine related to it, and then we do the scale down. And now I'm going to show that the bare metal host is going through the deprovisioning phase. As you can see, it's already deprovisioning. Later, a few moments, it would be preparing. During this phase, it's when we are doing the update for the firmware that we set for the, for the bare metal host. When it comes to available, we can scale up again to make it go to provisioning. Now I'm going to try to show the host firmware components again to see if we already got the newer information available in the CRD. It still hasn't shown the new information as you can see, but then after a few minutes again, when we, we do, it's still provisioning. As you can see now for the VMC, we have the current version, uh, initial version, and last version flashed, and also updated information showing that like we are able to go from 6.10.30 to 6.10.80 firmware version for iDRAC. And also the spec updates match in the status. And later, it got the host to be provisioned, basically. The second part, yeah, it's the same cluster that we had before. So now I'm going to show the example of the new host that I'm adding. And as you can see, it still has the secret and bare metal host, but now we are adding the host primary components directly that we want to update before it will its provision, so we don't have to go through the provision again. It created other resources related to that. And there is a small difference when you try to manually create the host primary components or when you let it be automatically created. As you can see, it takes a few annotations, doesn't have still all the information in status, but the spec already contains what we are going to do. We are going to do a BMC and BIOS update in this machine. It's inspecting, so now we are probably getting the information about the current versions that we have in the machine. As you can see now, current version 2.21.2, and 7.0000171. There was a still inspecting phase. Now in preparing, it's executing the two firmware updates that we have required for that. When it comes in available, now we can scale up the machine set again, so it goes to preparing because the newer information is only updated in the host firmware components when you try to make it go to provisioning, basically. So we still have the old information, and but the updates, it's already present there. 
because it worked. And when we check again, as you can see here now, we are using the BMC 16080, the same one that we had in the previous machine. And also we did a downgrade for the BIOS version for this machine at the same time. And this is still provisioning, and in a few seconds it will be provisioning. That would conclude the first demo, and now I'm going to show you the Bifrost one, that it's with three fold bare metal. Doing a bare metal node list, as you can see, we have two virtual machines. Uh, one is in available, and the other one is already in manageable, so we are able to update the firmware on test VM one. And if you do a bare metal node list, and pass the ID, you will retrieve the information about the, the versions for that machine. Since there was no update, like the last version is not available, and also the update ad is not. This would be the CLI when you want to execute the pin step to update the firmware. And if you do a bare metal node list, uh, it's going through cleaning. And during that phase, it's when we are executing the firmware update on the ironic side. The status are a bit different because in Kubernetes, we do some match, like preparing it match to, to clean, for example. Now, as you can see, if you do a bare metal node list, now the current version is 1.2z.0, and we have the update add information about the node. Now we are trying to execute for the other machine, and as you can see, the request action thing cannot be performed while it's in the state available. It would be for the test VM2. So yeah, that's it from the demo part. And well, feel free to get in touch with us if you have any questions later and so on. Uh, OpenStack Ironic channel on OFTCRC network. Uh, if your question is more related to the part of Kubernetes, feel free to join the Kubernetes Slack for MetalCube, is the cluster API bearer metal. And also reach out via the OpenStack Discuss mailing list. Please use Ironic in the subject, it helps us to find the right mail. And also, if you are interested in Ironic or have any questions, uh, that I would like to bring up. Uh, tomorrow we have a forum session, uh, 2 p.m., collaborating with the Iron community, uh, room 203. So, any questions? <laughs>